Do you want to cook the insanely craveable umami bomb mushroom dish of your dreams and learn a technique that you can use with lots of other vegetables, including cruciferous ones that the kids in your family are going to scream for? I mean, scream for as in, I want that again, mom, dad, we need that in the house. This is it, the mushroom dish of your dreams. The first thing that we want to do is cut and prepare our mushrooms. I have some shiitakes here that have the stems off of them, and I'm just going to slice them into sort of inch-wide strips. I have some portobellos here. Take a couple of those, cut the stems off, and those are going to go in with the shiitakes. I've got several different types of oyster mushroom here beautiful petals on these gray oysters. I'm just cutting them off their bases. I'll save the bases for soups or stocks in a bag in my freezer. And I've got some Hoshimeji mushrooms right here that are grown in clusters. I'm just gonna cut them off of the stems, turn up the heat on my pan, and I'm gonna start by putting about half the butter in there and I'm gonna get it foaming and just starting to brown before I add my larger, thicker mushrooms that are gonna cook slower than my more delicate, petaled mushrooms on the back side here. I'm gonna season them with soy, fish sauce, brown sugar, and Chinese chives, and off the heat, whisk in that last bit of butter to kind of make a really rich sauce around them, sort of an ideal way to cook mushrooms. And I think that you will enjoy using this method with other vegetables as well as a way to get your kids to eat them. Now by the time they're portioned out, there's actually very little butter, fish sauce, soy, and sugar per portion. It ends up not really interfering with the healthful aspects of the vegetables that you're serving them with. And all I'm gonna do is put these in a single layer and I'm just gonna leave them alone. So I'm doing this in butter, over high heat, one side, and get some good color on them so that I know, despite adding the liquids later and some of that hard sear coming off them, that crust, I know the flavor of the hard sear is gonna be left behind in there, and that's what's really crucial with this and something that home cooks can take advantage of. I'm gonna show you one of the mushrooms to show you what I'm talking about by that hard sear. Cook side raw side. So once I know I've got that kind of coloring going on and I can see that these have started to get all yummy, in go the rest of my mushrooms. And I want some of that buttery goodness to get in there. So I'll give those a little toss. At this point, I'll season with a little ground pepper, a little kosher salt, you can use sea salt, whatever you like. The oyster and the hoshimeji won't take very long to cook once they sit in that thermal momentum of the saute pan for a little while longer. And you can see that after very little contact with the heat source, those oyster mushrooms and those hoshimejis are almost cooked through. So when they sort of soften and lose their volume, that's when I add a little bit of soy sauce, fish sauce, brown sugar, and a healthy amount of garlic chives, which I love with mushrooms. And I just want that to cook for a couple of seconds before I do my adult thing and stir in this butter off the heat. It's going to essentially emulsify and make a butter sauce out of the fish sauce, sugar, soy, and those mushroom juices, and voila. This is so insanely craveable because of the addition of the types of ingredients that we put in, but this will make someone who is not a mushroom lover, a mushroom lover. And if you do the same technique with 
broccoli or Brussels sprouts, you're going to find a whole new audience for green cruciferous vegetables in your house. Salt, fat, sugar, umami, out the wazoo. That is the sauteed mushroom dish of your dreams, truly.